The recent approval of an Interdevelopment Bank IDB policy-based loan has been described as a recognition of Guyana's ongoing efforts to improve management of the natural resources and environmental sectors. This week on Eldorado Shines, you will learn more about how this funding will help foster the enhancement of the regulatory, institutional and monitoring structures to support the implementation of Guyana's low-carbon development strategy. As a result of the IDB funding, the Guyana Forestry Commission will be looking to strengthen key areas that include intensifying work under the EU FLECT program, community forestry, code of practice, and the monitoring, reporting, and verification system. Within the forest sector, um, there are a number of areas that have been identified for um, further advancement as part of the policy-based loan, abbreviated PBL, that has recently been approved. And among some of those areas are programs that the GFC would have been engaged in for some, some time now, um, in a couple of cases, two, three years, that will be further advanced um, over the coming period and that would look towards consolidating on a couple of key um, thematic programs, um, one of which would be forest legality as well as sustainable forest management. Among the main areas that I would like to, um, to share with viewers is that of the European Union Forest Law Enforcement Governance and Trade Program. Um, one of the compliance aspects under the policy-based loan looks to advance what is one of the main pillars of the EU FLECT, um, which is the European Union Forest Law Enforcement Governance and Trade Program, which is the definition of forest legality. The definition is one of the main parts of the agreement itself, which will be called the Voluntary Partnership Agreement, VPA. And the, the definition, in a sense, defines the parameters of what will be required for compliance under that agreement. So it would state what stakeholders at the various levels, the large concession, the small concession, the community operators, the Amerindian communities and villages that, that own and manage lands, what would have to be complied with for um, there to be full adherence to the terms and conditions of that agreement. Um, so far, we've been able to arrive at um, a second version of that definition of legality through various um, cooperations we've had, including with the FAO, and um, we're looking to advance that further with um, under the aspect that is addressed for forestry in the policy-based loan. That would see us being able to finalize what hopefully would be the third version of the definition of legality, which in a sense would not only improve from the first and the second versions, but in a way reflect the continuous and ongoing stakeholder consultations and engagements that we've been having. Across Guyana, we were engaging and we have been engaging with stakeholders to find out how can the definition be coined and be framed to best reflect what is expected from a strong legality mechanism and a strong legality framework and of course recognizing what is realistic um, for our stakeholders to comply with. There are different aspects of legality. So legality would start off by looking at the very aspect of the issuance of the forest concession to the harvesting activities, to the transporting of forest produce, to the eventual aspect of the trade in forest produce. So in a sense, it covers the entire chain of custody of that forest product, as well as the precursor activities, which would have come into place from the actual issuance of the concession for, for harvesting purposes. So the definition of legality is critical because in many ways, what comes from the definition will really tell the tale on how successful we are in implementing a in implementing the VPA. So for example, if it's the case that we set a standard that is either not reflective of what can be complied with locally or what is not reflective of our current legislative framework, then it will put us at a disadvantage in being able to effectively implement because there will be a clear mismatch in what is provided for in that sort of definition and in what would prevail in our existing framework. 
But that is not to say that there are not identified areas of improvement in what is currently outlined in our systems as, as they exist today. But one of the main um, views of the EU, and certainly endorsed by the GOG, is that when we frame a definition of legality as far as practicable, it should embrace what currently prevails in terms of forest legality. A key element of the FLECT Action Plan is a voluntary scheme to ensure that only legally harvested timber is imported into the EU from countries agreeing to take part in this scheme. Under this program, countries are subjected to audits to determine where they stand in the area of compliance. We have been subject so far to two annual audits of independent forest monitoring. And those audits would have audited 38 indicators on the various criteria and on the various principles. And um, over the past two audits, it makes the case as to how many we have passed and how many we have not passed. And I will say that for both of the years that we have done the assessment, we have reached over 95% compliance across the 38 indicators that we have, we have assessed. And these reports are public on the GFC's website for those who have an interest in seeing some of those areas that we are strong and some of those areas that need more improvement. So in a sense, it is creating a framework within which we can continually monitor how well we do and that still has synergy and international replicability and in a way sets a benchmark of where we would like to be and shows other countries as well that the benchmark we set really is relatable to also their scenario maybe in not a way of full um, application but certainly in, in a majority way. The Guyana Forestry Commission has very effective export procedures in place. All forest produce to be exported must be verified by a GFC grading inspector and the required documentation must be properly completed and verified prior to export. The activities under the IDB loan will further strengthen work the Guyana Forestry Commission is conducting with 73 community forestry associations across the country. It is intended that um, the activities under the policy-based loan will help us to continue our engagement with stakeholders um, at the level of the community forestry organizations in two ways. One, to enable them to be able to practice sustainable forest management in a stronger way, a way that allow for new members who join the associations to also be able to have the level of capacity that older members have. And secondly, to be able to target project funding to advance other kinds of work for their associations and to build the non-forestry aspect of the association's work. So for example, every association has an aspect embedded within its frame that has to do with social development. So the proceeds that come from the forestry activity from the association go towards helping to build a walkway to go towards a certain school or health healthcare unit or um, any kind of social activity for the communities in which they, they operate. Um, sometimes it helps to fund buying a school bus for the children of the village or whatever the case might be. So the aspect on social development is also one that we are hoping to pay closer attention to through this program, whereby we not only build the potential of the community to use the forest for income generating purpose and for employment provision in an isolated way, but to find a way to let this translate to social development of the areas where they come from, the villages and the communities. The community forestry associations are empowered to make decisions in consultation with their membership that serve to ensure the community benefits from operations being conducted by companies. The main decision-making body of this association is what is called the, um, the actual council, the committee, the steering committee of, of those associations. So in a way, it's the executive of those of, of the community forestry organization. And the executive has a reporting responsibility to the general membership of the, of the association itself. 
So what we always encourage, and it's, it's with an intent to ensure that there is congruence across the various activities that the association engage in, and also for consistency and uniformity in the way in which they deal with the handling of finances. We usually recommend that for any company that is working with that association, for that responsibility to be undertaken by the executive. So for example, if there is a 30 or 40% profit margin that comes in from engaging with that partner, that money is held and within the decision-making control of the executive, which would report to the general membership. So in that way, it wouldn't be what the company decides to do. It would be what the association itself decides to do. So in a sense, it puts the power of decision-making at the level of the community and not in an external manner for the decision to be made by someone else, a third party. So that um, works in most cases, but there are cases where a, a partner that is working with the community has a specific area of interest, maybe in the development of a road or in the building of certain bridges. And in those cases, we would accommodate such discussions and GFC would mediate such discussions between, um, among, um, of course, the commission and the partner and the association. But by and large, we would like as much as possible to not be integrally involved in determining what that goes to, as we believe the best way for the community to be fully empowered is to be able to make decisions for themselves and to decide where the resources that come from partnerships and from their own earnings can be best channeled. The first draft of the Code of Practice for Timber Harvesting was developed and rolled out from 1999 through 2002. Depending on the scale of the operation, different codes apply. Under the loan, ongoing work on the separated codes will be advanced. Basically, the code is a document that lays out exactly what has to be complied with by the timber harvester. So what needs to be done in the planning of how much should be extracted, how roads should be built, how log ponds should be set up, how protection is to be done for buffers and other areas that need to be protected, like biodiversity reserves, how are these supposed to be set, how is waste supposed to be disposed, what should be the social responsibility to the people that you work with, what should be some of the um, other aspects that you have to comply with generally, environment and non-environment wise. And this code was rolled out from 2002 to um, 2013 in a national way. And in 2013, we started a process of trying to find a way to not make the code as generic as it was for, as it were, for the various aspects of operators, because that code essentially bulked everyone together. Large operators, small operator, persons operating in agricultural lease and mining areas, all were addressed under that code. So you can see that there were areas that needed to be improved because some of the operations of the small um, concessions are not similar to the, those of the large concessions. So that was an urgent need to find a way to separate it out. Under the policy-based loan, we will be advancing the rolling out of these separated codes which we now have. So we now have a separate code for large concessions, a separate code for small concessions, and a separate code for mining leases and agriculture leaseholders. So this allow us to more specifically speak to the requirements of each stakeholder group in a way that does not generalize and that does not make assumptions. So over the course of the coming period, and um, this falls part of the policy-based loan, we will be looking to um, build stakeholder capacity to implement the new aspects of these codes as well as to fine-tune any additional areas that need to be addressed in the effective rolling out of these codes. But that process has already started. And it is hoped that in the similar way there was success in the version 2 from 2002 to 2013 in that one generic code, that there will be similar success over perhaps a lesser period, um, a shorter period, in the specific codes for the, from, for the stakeholder groups. I must say, though, that from initial feedback, um, the advantage of having a specific code for each operator is clearly seen by our, by our various stakeholders across the country. And finding a way to continually spread that message is going to be 
our priority for the next um, for the next year and certainly this is encompassed under the thinking and under the motivation of the policy-based loan. The Commission is satisfied with the level of compliance to the codes by those operating in the forestry sector. From 2002, a lot of what we were enforcing were in a phased manner. So in a way, we were focusing on some of the main areas of the code. And we started off by looking at areas of quota, ensuring that the annual allowable cut is complied with. And I would say that in the phase implementation, we have progressively been seeing a high level of compliance for those areas that we continually target. So like in the early years of 2002 to 2004, we focused heavily on ensuring that the annual allowable cut in the quota allocations and the planning framework are, are closely adhered to. Later on in the later years, we built in other aspects to the point where we were talking about reduced impact logging and other more technical aspects. And as those get added on, we then add the compliance framework to monitor those. So what I'm saying in essence is that um, at the very outset, compliance with the entire code might not be at 100%. But compliance with those aspects that we target as priority, those we see a strong um, high level of compliance. And as we build in new elements, we progressively see improvement. And this is what we intend to do with these new codes as well too to target areas that can be complied with right away because it makes little sense to be over ambitious and to want to have everything done at the same time. Certainly the private sector stakeholders would not see this as a practical solution. So as we build in progressive phase implementation, it is necessary for us to be um, responsive in a way to have the monitoring framework also speak to that. But so far I, um, we're optimistic that um, the uptake will be good and that we will be able to see the kind of um, endorsement by the stakeholders because at the end of the day they're selling to markets which are environmentally conscious so they also would want to say that when I harvest this batch of forest products that they meet a high level of standard government assisting miners the Ministry of Natural Resources and of the Environment and the Guyana Geology and Mines Commission continue to undertake the rehabilitation of hinterland roads and infrastructure to ensure mining lands are easily accessible. In this regard, efforts are being made to implement road monitoring checkpoints to ensure that roads are not used indiscriminately since this results in its deterioration. A message from the Guyana Geology and Mines Commission. Guyana started work on the monitoring, reporting, and verification system in 2009, and the intent of that MRV, as abbreviated, is to provide a reporting platform for monitoring and measuring forest change in every annual period. So what the MRV effectively does is to establish an opening, an opening number of total forest area that exists at the start of a year. So, for example, at the start of the most recently completed year, which is 2013, we have on January 1, 2013, what was the status of forest? And then over the course of 2013, when mining activities would take place, forestry activities, when roads get built and other land use activities take place, those, of course, would bring about change in the forest area. We monitor and we report on the, on the specific expanse of that change so that we end up with a closing stock for those of us who speak accounting accounting terminology we end up with a closing stock of forests as of 31st of december 2013 and we do that for every year we've done that for four years now 2010 11 12 and 13 we're just about to to commence work on 2014. so that that allows for us to know how much forest we have at any one point in time and what is causing change in forests for any of those reporting periods. In part, our work on the MRV has been um, stimulated by the guyana norway Agreement on Forest and Climate Change, whereby the MRV provides one half of the main reporting platform for um, not only um, complying with what the agreement in essence requires, but provides a framework within which we can monitor and measure performance. Because as many people know, the Norway Agreement is um, rests heavily on forests and how much of this forest do you have? 
how much of the forest have you maintained? How much of the forest have you lost in, in a specific period? And the MRV provides the answers to those three questions in a quantitative way every year. This reporting is subjected to an independent verification exercise conducted by a company hired by the government of Norway. Every annual period that we report, there is an independent third-party verification that is done to say whether the results we have given out are indeed true and correct and whether those results have come from a system and applying methodology that are sound and robust and in keeping with international best practices as well. So those reports are also made public. So the MRV really is about reporting, reporting on the state of forest and doing so re routinely and systematically in a way that gives credibility to when we say we have 18.38 million hectares of forest, it is from a position of science and not just an anecdotal position. Funding by way of loans served to not only strengthen the systems of agencies such as the Guyana Forestry Commission, but ultimately served to benefit operators, communities and the country as a whole. In the area of EU FLECT, by being able to advance this area, we can then have the operators, which is the more direct form, be able to show compliance with these legality requirements. This would mean that the persons they sell to would then be able to access and maintain markets that maybe they would not have been able to access and maintain. So sawmillers who they sell to, exporters who then they sell to, and buyers who buy from those exporters all are part of the chain who would benefit. And the best example can probably be given at the community level, whereby communities that are able to have stronger capacity to implement sustainable forest management through our training and the other programs that we have in place, through engaging in programs like EU FLECT, through um, having the credibility and relying on the reporting that the MRV provides, now we're able to have a more expansive scope of forestry activities, not only looking at timber, but non-timber wood products. And we see a lot of this coming out now with an embracing of not only monitoring resources, but being able to better um, target some of those resource capacities that they would not have been able to before. So in all in all, it means that people are better able to do what initially was intended, but in a way that allows for them to um, make more income from doing so, employ more persons from doing so, and having it done in a more coherent manner than otherwise would have been the case. So it really is a consolidation of efforts. And it is not only the direct operator level, it's across communities, it's across um, the, the intermediaries who um, are in the trade arena, and it's also at the exporter level. And of course, um, from the trade side, it certainly benefits the country as a whole when there is increased foreign exchange earnings from programs that allow for us to enhance trade and enhance our environmental profile. And also, um, you know, overall it creates uh, certainly um, a way in which we can um, improve and enhance exports of forest products. Government assisting miners. Miners in Guyana have access to 10% of their gold sales available in U.S. dollars to assist in retooling and capital acquisition. A message from the Guyana Geology and Mines Commission. Recent approval of, by the IDB of the policy based loan number two targeting the environmental sector is a signal sign and, in fact, an important landmark in our country's quest in terms of developing the, and managing in a very sound and responsible way the environmental sector. It also recognizes the efforts made by the Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment and related agencies to ensure that we give the environment much priority. And because we've been able to satisfy a number of steps in terms of, one, reducing deforestation, ensuring that we undertake mining activities that take the environment into account, 
also develop modern and very proactive as well as very fair land management uh, approaches in our country due to these initiatives due to these uh, achievements we were able to uh, attract this load the resources will certainly allow us to expand on the considerable and certainly uh, impressive achievement we've made within the environmental management sector as we go forward in dealing with some of the new as well as some of the old challenges in this regard. Uh, further, this, this particular disbursement and this loan supports the implementation of the low carbon development strategy in the long term, which a government through the Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment has always given priority to ensuring that we have a very balanced and very open approach in terms of managing our natural resources, but doing so in a manner that takes into account social as well as environmental uh, commitments and responsibilities. We will continue to work and engage with all stakeholders as we move in terms of the implementation of this loan and looking at ways in which we can strengthen institutions, strengthen our agencies, improving our policies, looking at modern legislation, and at the end of the day, uh, taking into account the support that we receive from the IDB as we've done from our external partners uh, to ensure that this type of support is used to the benefit of all the people of Guyana and should not in any way uh, be considered as a backward step, but rather a forward step in terms of environmental management, but also a recognition of what our people and our country has done in terms of stewardship of the environment, particularly what we've done in our reducing in terms of uh, forest uh, deforestation, but also managing the environment as a whole. Check us out on the internet for this and every episode of Eldorado Shines. Just go to YouTube, search for Eldorado Shines and start watching. Or like us on Facebook and receive instant updates. You've been watching Eldorado Shines. Do join us again next week for another program. Until then, do remember that we all have a role to play in protecting the environment. <laughs>